This is round seven of Mansions of Madness. We are so close to, to success here, it's just, it's, it's scary. It, it's also scary. We've got Carson. He has the evidence we need. He's got the ritual components, a bunch of evidence. As long as he can get out of the house, which is way the heck over here, the front door is way up here in the corner of the screen. If he can get out of the house, then everyone has won except the NPC, the bad guys and Rita. Rita is in, has the insane condition applied to her. She believes that in order for her to win, she has to burn down the house. She needs to set fire to six rooms. She knows that Neen has a kerosene lantern, and she is going to try to get that kerosene lantern. Originally, she'd gone over to this space to kill a monster. She failed to do that, and then the other monsters converged into the space. So I'm gonna judge that in her addled mind right now, she has to get that lantern for the benefit of everyone and burn down the entire house. That's what makes sense to her. Char uh, Carson just needs to get out of the house. Charlie and Mean are still under the belief that they're just fighting monsters. In their mind, we're all unified. We have to get rid of these horrific creatures. Possibly Charlie, who saw Carson disrupt the ritual, poss possibly, I I'm, I'm betting that he is trying to sort of take the brunt so that Charlie can get out. That's kind of my, my theory. And then once they see that Charlie is out, uh, they would break and run. Nobody knows what Rita is doing but Rita. And, and the monsters don't know what Rita is doing, so that's important to remember as well. So it's the investigator phase of round six now. So I'm just going to start with Carson. He's going to move into this space and then attempt to move out of that space. Okay, so a move action is two spaces. Does he interrupt his move action to do an evade check? So are you, do you, if, if you move, if you end your move on a space with monsters, then you do have to do an, an evade check. But he doesn't end his turn with the monsters. He, he ends his turn in, a, in an empty space. When an investigator moves a set number of spaces moving from one space to an adjacent space. An investigator or monster cannot move through walls. An investigator or monster cannot move through a door. Voluntary movement is movement generated by an, an effect that uses may or up to. An investigator who attempts to move out of a monster space voluntarily must resolve an evade check. But a move action is defined as an investigator may perform the move action to move up to two spaces, may interrupt the move action to perform another action. I actually didn't even know that. After he has finished performing the action, he may finish performing his move. I did not realize that. If an investigator attempts to move out of a space that contains a monster as part of a move action, you must first... Yes, okay. That's pretty clear. So we interrupt movement. I didn't even realize that. Never, never, never realized that. I feel like I've really cheated myself, actually. So he moves into that space, and now we pause, and we do an evade check. Evade checks are done in the app, and that's done against a monster. So he needs to... I'm going to just play it that he just has to evade the biggest monster in the space. Uh, I, that's, pro that's, not, that's probably not correct. Evade. Confirm. Vanderbilt aims a vicious kick at your leg. Agility 2. If you pass, you get past it. Okay, so agility. Carson, I think, has 2 agility. And he needs 2 to pass, I'm assuming. And he fails. Miserably fails. If you fail, your legs are swept out from under you, suffer 1 face damage, and forfeit your action. So he's, he just stops. He has... He has stopped... He has been stopped exactly in that space. He gets a face down damage. How bad is that for him? Not bad. He's only got one damage, and he's got eight health. So, it's not the worst thing in the world right now. Now, those monsters... Uh, th people are going to attack him later, you know, in the Mythos phase, so it's, it's going to be bad, but at this moment, it's not the worst thing in the world. This does open us up to some interesting options, though. Charlie and Carson now share a space, so Charlie could take the evidence from Carson. Carson could willingly, could choose not to contest, could give him the evidence, and then Charlie could try to evade and move out of the space. Is that something that would benefit us, though? Charlie has, he has less health. He, he's only a five health. Carson is eight health, but two damage. So they're kind of equal in that regard. 
Charlie has a lot more horror right now. Um, he's four away, I think, from being insane. And he doesn't really have great uh, agility either. And I'm assuming the evade check is going to be agility. I think I'm just going to have him attack again. It didn't go well for him last time, but I, I think that's probably the wise choice here. Yeah, I think that's what he'll, he'll do. And I think I'm going to keep just going against the, the big bad. He's got a knife. Your opponent rushes forward and you lift your blade to receive the charge. And this is a, a, a willpower check, which is pretty good for Charlie. I mean, it's definitely better than his strength or his agility. Let's see what happens. That's three successes. If you pass, which he does, you hold steady and your foe runs into your weapon. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage. Ah, that's only one. The, a knife just does one, one thing of damage. So it's a success, but not, not the greatest success. So we could try to evade, but at this point I don't see the advantage. So I guess I'll just attack again with a bladed weapon. Your opponent rushes forward and you feel... And okay, so it's the same, same deal. Same exact deal. Take these dice, although I'd, I'd rather just leave them there and say, yes, that was a success. One success and a clue. Charlie gets to convert a clue for free, so two successes, so that's a, a success all around. But the knife only deals one damage, so I'll apply one damage to Vanderbilt. So two damage out of ten. I mean, it's, it's something, right? All right, so now we have Mean and Rita, and it's one of those things where, I mean, I know what's happening, so I'm going to have to kind of figure out what the characters do. What I am going to have Mean do is retreat. That's what I want her to do. But Rita wants to grab the kerosene lantern from her. So I need to figure out who's going to go first. Uh, I forgot to choose which was which. Um, I'm going to say success is Mean and Clue is Rita. Okay, success for Mean. So she is going to try to evade. So she wants to move out of this space. We know what that means. The Deep One swings a single heavy fist aimed at your ribs. Agility, two for, for success. Min has an agility of four, so she has a fighting chance at this. But not, not going to happen. One success. Uh, oh, and she doesn't even get that. Because she is currently stressed. Which means that she has to sacrifice... She, she gained the stress card earlier, so she... And, and it's still an active card. At the end of this turn, she loses the stress card. But currently, she, it is still active. If you fail, the blow knocks the wind from your chest, suffer one face down damage, and become dazed. She's losing a lot of health. Uh, that is That is happening. She's got... Well, okay, four damage out of seven health. And now she is also dazed. Now last time she got the dazed condition, it wasn't that big of a deal. Let's see what it is this time. You cannot spend clues to convert dice results or perform additional puzzle steps at the end. Okay, once again, I'm going to actually just get rid of that. She doesn't have any clue tokens, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so Mean did not get to move away from the monster on that round. But that was just one, one action. So I think I'm going to have her attack this monster out of desperation. I mean, she just got hit by it. She might as well go again. She's attacking unarmed. You throw a low punch at your foe's gut. And as the figure curls over to avoid the first hit, you swing your other fist upwards toward its exposed head. This is a strength check, which for me is just three dice. And of course, she's stressed which means she's going to lose a success. So she needs like three successes. And she got one. But she loses that one because of her stress condition. If you fail, your offhand swing lacks the necessary strength and control. So nothing happens. Nothing happens. So now it's Rita's turn. So Rita is going to try to grab the kerosene lamp from Mean because she wants to start fires. This is a contested roll. There's no, there's no reason for Min to give it to her. So this is a, a special kind of test. And it's one that I do not do often. So I'm going to have to 
Look up how this is done. Rarely used actions. Steal actions. Steal possessions from another investigator. Steal, see steal actions on page 17. Okay. Page 17. Steal action. An investigator can perform the steal action to take possessions from another investigator in the space. You do so by following these steps. Choose your target. Yeah, done that. Opposed test. The active investigator chooses strength. That'll be Rita for uh, strength, agility, or observation. Then both observers test that chosen skill. Rita has five strength, so she's going to give it her all to just grab that kerosene lantern and wrest it away from Mean. That's one success. That's really probably fortunate in the long run for for me but not for for her for mean or not for rita rather and then this is uh this is mean's strength of three one success so i guess we have to do a, another roll uh, if the chosen investigators equals or exceeds the active investigator forfeits it doesn't say so the the active investigator may take one possession from the chosen investigator for each success result in excess of the chosen there is no excess therefore she can take zero results she can take zero items so that's it's essentially a fail a tie is a fail okay so that was one action from rita and then i guess just because as i say like in rita's mind yes she needs the kerosene lantern but i mean also there are three monsters in her space so I'm going to have her attack one of those monsters. And I think the uh, the one that she'll attack is the one that's just literally one point away from being gone. Uh, she does have a machete, which is a bladed weapon. You attempt to bat your foe's defenses, defenses aside with the flat of your blade. Strength, two. Well, her strength is five, as we know. Oop. Okay. So that's three successes and two clues. She has no clue tokens available to convert, but, I mean, three successes is not bad. If you pass, which she did, you take advantage of the opening and strike true. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus the test results. Well, that's a lot of wasted damage, but it does do the single point of damage that we needed to remove that monster from the board. I'll actually, I'm going to, it was... It was actually this light blue one, but I'm going to remove this darker one just so that way I have it. It's easier for me to visualize which which one is which. Okay, so we still got two deep ones on the board. We've used up all of our investigator actions, which means that it is now the mythos phase. A disembodied voice whispers blasphemies into your ear. This mythos effect... This mythos event affects the investigator with the highest lore. Uh, that's going to be a real competition. No, I guess it's not. <laughs> it's Carson, for sure. That's easy. I mean, he's got four, and everyone else has three, so it's not like night and day, but I mean, it's pretty clear. You do your best to disregard the voice. Willpower two. Carson's willpower is only a three, three dice. So this is... Um... This is tough. He needs two successes for this. And um, he got one success and two clues. Does he have anything that'll convert clues to successes? He's got evidence. He's got... Oh, roll one additional die. I forgot about that. He's got a holy cross that lets him roll one additional dice on... Oh, that's a... No, yeah, that's on, on willpower tests. Oh, and he's got an arcane manuscript that makes him do... One additional die on resolving a lore test. Wow. I feel like I've been cheating him. I mean, I have been cheating him. Ugh. Nothing. Okay, so one. One success. Suffer two horror and become stunned. Oh, that's the worst. That is the absolute worst thing that could have happened. Uh, becoming stunned, I'm pretty sure, means that he misses out on his next turn. I'll confirm that with a card, but I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Stunned. You cannot perform more than a single action. That's not as bad as I thought, so that is not the worst thing. 
I guess mesmerized would have been the worst thing, where an alien consciousness takes over your 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 brain for a turn. Okay, um, so that's too bad for him. Such is life. Vanderbilt moves two spaces toward the nearest investigator. He doesn't have to, and he is going to uh, attack the investigator who has suffered the least horror. Okay. Carson has four horror currently. Charlie, they might be equal. No, Charlie has five. So naturally, it's going to be attacking the person with the equipment, the, the, the evidence that needs to get out of the house. Vanderbilt slips forward and places a single cold hand over your mouth. Agility of two. Carson only has agility, two agility dice. Clue and failure, so that's really just failure all around for, for that. If you fail, the sensation of cold salt water rushes into your lungs and you begin to drown. Suffer one face down damage, one face down horror, become stunned. Okay, well, he's already stunned, that's the good news. Um, one damage and one horror face down, right? Oh, uh, I think so. I clicked okay and. and lost track of what was actually happening okay so one two three four five horror now out of eight no out of six so he's very nearly insane himself and then three damage out of eight so he's doing okay on health but very dangerous dangerously close to becoming not sane the cultist moves two spaces doesn't need to then it attacks the investigator to its in its space with the fewest clues. That's again Carson, because Charlie has three clue tokens, and Carson has zero. The cultist holds a, a, a staff aloft, threatening you with it. Observation of two. Okay, Car Carson's observation is five. That's three successes, so it's he, he actually did all right that time. If you pass, you notice the blade in the other hand and twist it into a counterattack. The monster suffers one damage. Wow, that's quite the success. That's not common. Uh, deep one attacks. Oh, darn it. I didn't see who it was going to attack. The least something. Probably the least strength, because then the check is strength, so I think it's against mean again. Throwing its heavy body into you, the deep one attempts to pin you to the ground. Strength of two. Mean's strength is, I think, three. Yes, it is. That's one success. Sounds like a failure to me. It is. If you fail, the monster tears at you with sharp teeth and oozes fish smelling slime into your face suffer one damage and become dazed so dazed meaning you can't spend a clue token which yes i know that suffer one damage so that's not face down damage i have to read this and actually resolve it back spasm you clutch at your back as your muscles re revolt forgetting your possessions for the moment resolve immediately drop one random item then flip this card face down i can't imagine what item mean is gonna drop right now so she's got seven health yeah okay so she's five five damage right now she loses her stressed condition she uh still has a focused condition she has four four horror and she needs to lose a random item so i'll just shuffle some cards here and take the top uh, item, which is, of course, I mean, I knew this. Like, I, I literally knew this. I mean, I didn't literally know this, but I knew this. So she drops her kerosene lantern. I mean, it, it literally couldn't have been any other object, right? Like, the one object that Rita needs to burn the house down and win the game for Rita is the one thing that Mean dropped. Of course, obviously. It couldn't have happened any other way. So that's that. And then, of course, the other deep one is going to attack. And I keep forgetting to see who it's attacking. I'm going to have it attack Rita just to give myself a break. 
A guttural sound escapes the Deep One's throat as it gazes at you. Its throat, its throat bulges for a moment before it spits a frothing stream of salt water into your eyes. Suffer two face down damage. Uh, your agility negates. If you suffer one, then you're dazed. Okay, agility for Rita is not bad. It's four. She doesn't want to become dazed. Two, so she's a, it's a success, all-round success. Each investigator must resolve a horror check. Right, I forgot about this step. This has to be the most tedious part of the game for me, the horror check. I have to be honest, it is just such a slog to get through all of these horror checks. Vanderbilt snickers, and you realize that you have stepped within a glyph etched into the ground. It goes red as you study the symbols, suffer one damage and one horror, but lore checks negate. So Carson and Charlie need to do this check. And Carson, as I've just recalled, has a has an item, an old manuscript that get gets him one extra dice for his lore checks. So that's a, a total of five dice. He gets two, so he's fine. And then Carson I mean not Carson, Charlie has three lore. And he does one success and one clue. He's got clue tokens. And so he's going to spend a clue token to convert this clue to a success. So he's so so zero zero effects from that particular interaction. But now we have deep ones. The deep one opens its mouth and a choking wet song emerges from its throat. It is no human sound, but you feel the creature's yearning, fear, and hate in every note. Suffer two horror but your brain negates. I think Mean and Rita both actually have pretty res respectable willpowers. Well, Mean, Mean only has three, but she gets three successes, so she's fine. Um, Rita has four, and she has two successes, so she's fine. So amazingly, no, and I guess that's part of, yeah, I don't know, horror checks horror checks just it kind of feels like it drags out the mythos phase strangely i just i don't love them but that is the mythos phase that's all that's everything next up is the investigator phase which i will do in the next video thanks for watching